The reference is Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 to 28. It's the Syrophoenician woman. I used to love to hear my dad preach about her. <laughs> Jesus! Thou son of David! Have mercy on me! Disciples say, can't you shut that woman up? She's bothering us, Lord. So she shouted even louder. I said, Jesus! Thou son of David! Over here, Lord! <laughs> seemed like Jesus wasn't listening to her. In fact, it seemed like Jesus was dissing her. Because finally when he spoke up, he says, you know... I only came to the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, I, I, it's not you know meat for me to give the children's bread to dogs. But she kept on asking. And she kept on moving toward him. And she kept on pushing past where others would have stopped. I'm going to talk about this for a minute because... There's a secret that, that, that some people have learned that Jesus is moved in a different way than human beings are moved. You know, J Jesus doesn't deal with us after the flesh. He deals with us after the spirit. We approach him oftentimes on the basis of the flesh. Oh, my pain. Oh, the disease. Oh, the doctor's report. Oh, I feel so bad, God. You know, here's Jesus telling her, you know, you don't belong to the right tribe. You're just a little dog. You know, a lot of people came to church and they heard the pastor talk like that. They'd be so out the back door quickly. And they'd never be back again. You know, there are people who are, live in their self-pity. There are people who live in their rejection. And this is one of the things that God wants to close the door on today. This is the one thing that God wants to end today. Forget about what your mother said to you 15 years ago. Forget about the guy that broke your heart. Forget about the one that doesn't love you anymore. Okay, you sang the sad song, you played the violin, you cried the tears. It's over. Somebody say, it's over. If you want the newness of God and you want the healing of God, let go of the pain, let go of the suffering, let go of the past, let go of the pity party. Say, I have come as one that Christ is going to look on today. I'm moving toward Jesus. I'm putting a demand on his anointing and I refuse to wallow in self-pity any longer. Hallelujah. He took my shame. He took my guilt. He hung naked on a cross. He took the stripes for my healing. He's done it all for me. I'm not going to live in shame. I'm not going to live in remorse. I'm not going to live in the past any longer because it's a completed work. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Praise Jesus. He did it. <laughs> He did it! Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> we let the devil shut us down in our minds and our emotions. Somebody say something stupid to us. We can live in it for a week. But honey, it's time that army starts to understand it's not life as usual any longer. But we're going to learn how to take the tough stuff. We're going to learn how to get the thick skin. We're going to learn how to be resilient to the lies of the enemy. And we're going to stand up with the sword of the Lord in our hand. We're going to take the shield of faith above all. We'll quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. We're going to be a different breed, a new breed. Hallelujah. This is the day that we 
push back against the lies of the enemy. Come on, shout yes. Hallelujah. It's a day of release. See, people come to church for a healing meeting. And I've seen it. They come uh, wanting you to feel sorry for them. I've been sick for so long. I've been hurting so bad. And I just pray Jesus wants to heal me. Honey, take it. He's here to heal you. Oh, I know, but you don't know how badly I hurt. Well, what's bigger, Jesus or your pain? See, what are you, what are you looking at the most? Are you looking at the symptoms? Or are you looking at Jesus? You see, and I know, listen, we're all susceptible to it. All of us. I understand. I've been in pain. I understand what that is. But there comes a time when we have to make up our mind. I don't care if this pain tries to debilitate me. Yet will I praise him. You know, I love the part where Jesus told this woman it wasn't a good thing to give the children's bread to dogs. Because she didn't get offended. It's an unusual woman, by the way. <laughs> or man. Yeah. But, you know, I was reading this the other day, and something, you know, you hear it 150,000 times. My dad preached it 175,000 times. And I saw something for the very first time in the scripture. She said, Yes, Lord. But even the puppies eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Now, you know what she was saying? You're my master. She was identifying Jesus not just as Lord, but I'm taking you as my master. I recognize I might be a puppy in your household, but I still belong to you. You can kick me to the curb anytime you want to, but just give me a crumb or two, Lord. Because I know a crumb from you can take care of cancer in an instant. Hallelujah. I know what an anointed crumb from you can do. And Jesus was amazed at her faith. But it wasn't just that, that he had the power to heal her. She, being a Syrophoenician woman, was saying, I don't care if, if I'm in, not in your club, but I'm making you the Lord of my club. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm making you the master. I'm going to be the first in my city. I'm going to be the first of my tribe that says Jesus, the son of David, is my Lord and master. And when she understood and had revelation of who he was, Jesus said, oh, woman, great is the faith. You got it, girl. Whatever you came for, it's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that woman came for her daughter. Everybody thought she was making noise about herself, but her daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. And sometimes we don't know what's going on in the hearts of men and women. Right, right here in New Jersey, years and years ago, Brother Addison, do you remember Mother Velez? Mother Velez was that lady I was telling you about that used to jump up and down like that. She wore a little pillbox hat. And uh, I can still see her. When she worshipped, she got excited, but her worship was jumping up and down. But one time, Dad was taking an offering for the building. They they're tried to pay for the building. And he had just met with her before the service. And she said, Brother Schambach, you need to agree with me that I'm able to pay my rent this month. Because I'm about, I think it was $200 short. She had $300 on her. And when Dad got up to take the offering, the Lord spoke to her and said, give the $300 toward the building. And when dad saw her give it, he, said, he took the money and put it back in her hands. 
Because, you know, when you're pastor, it's a little different story than being an evangelist. He knew her situation. He says, no, honey, you need to save this for the rent. And she looked at him. <laughs> she said, Brother Shambach, are you trying to cheat me out of my oh. blessing? <laughs> he backed up. She said, you didn't ask me for it. God did. He said, give it back. <laughs> She put that $300 in the offering. Now, what dad didn't know is she was believing God for her two sons who were drug addicts to get saved. And she was sowing that offering for those two boys to get saved. And, you know, back in the day, they had services 21 days in a row. I mean, they, it was just perpetual revival. And I, he always said the next night. So if it wasn't the next night, I'm just quoting him, okay? But the next night... <laughs> He sees her sitting on the front row with two boys on the other side of her. And he just started to grin from ear to ear. He stopped the service. He said, hold it. I know there's a testimony here. Come here, mother. What happened? She said, Brother Shambach, you knew I gave that money in the offering. Yeah. She said, last night I got a knock on the door and I got the surprise of my life. She said, there were my boys. They were out in the streets. And she said, the power of God hit them in the streets. She said, every taste for the drug left their body. And she said, the conviction of the Holy Spirit fell on them. They came back to mama. They said, mama, we want to get right with God. We want to give our lives to Jesus. And they put money in her hand. And it was enough money to pay her rent for six months in the future. Hallelujah. That night they came to church with mama, gave their heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. It was a revolution in our family. This is what I'm trying to tell you. It may not make sense to the natural of mind. God may tell you to do something that is an act of faith. But when you move toward Jesus and when you just do what he tells you to do, he will never disappoint you. He's an on-time God. Hallelujah. He's never too late. He just tells you what to do and he, he causes you to respond. Oh, come on.